Hello there, Floyd Shimmers, and welcome to this video, and today I want to talk about the KV-5, because in the last update it did get buffed, I wanted to make this video a lot earlier, but, you know, Black Friday stuff, so now we're here. What has changed about the KV-5? Well, mainly two things, and it has a bit more DPM, and it has a lot more armor. It's about 40mm, pretty much the entirety of the front, which is quite a big increase, considering the penetration that most tier 8s have, and also tier 7s especially, you know, because... As a tier 8, you'll still be able to pin this thing reasonably with premium ammunition. So, unless you're an SDG. So, as a tier 7 though, you're gonna struggle quite a lot. And for a tier 9, most tier 9s have a gun that is basically tier 10. So they won't have struggle to penetrate this. So, let's get into it. And if you like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. So now let's get into the first battle with the KV-5. Well, it's actually the second one. But on the first one, I was an Alpenstadt and my team went city. And you know how those end. We lost, by the way, 7-0, so don't go city and don't go over there either. So, the KB-5 is surprisingly mobile enough for a heavy that's like 130 tons or something like that, which actually makes it a super heavy, you know? That's a super heavy. Not an M1 Abrams is not a super heavy. So, as you can see, 40 kilometers now, which is quite fast. Mouse can't do that, which is a bit weird, but then again, this is Stellinium. Propell propellant right here, you know, it's almost like putting an engine into a tank that doesn't e that doesn't exist when the tank was made. But anyway, now let's go over here. Yeah, uh, object 705, by the way, in case you don't know. Now let's try to do some damage. Now the gun is it's a heavy tank gun, but it has 2,200 DPM, which is quite decently. Well, quite a lot for a heavy at this point. I mean. The STG has 1.8k DPM, and uh, you actually have armor, so it's quite nice. Oh, what's that lag, yo? Why is my packet lost 18%? Alright. Well, um, if you have any complaints about that, then please send them to the German Telecom. They're very, very happy to receive your complaints, I guess, or not. Okay. I'm gonna now push forward here. And the sad fact is that if I were to play with 500 ping, I would still do better than most players in this game. And that is a bit weird. Does that mean that I'm too good? Or that I don't have a life? Or both? Hmm. Now, the VK is dead. I don't even know where. But uh, that doesn't really matter at this point. Scoping juice down there. Now, I'm going to try to move on this guy. Ideally. Um... I mean, we're down one guy, so we're gonna have to try to make something work here. Obviously, this thing has a choice of two guns, and with the choice of two guns, I mean it has one gun. Because obviously, one of those two guns is uh, useless. Like, insanely useless. 167mm penetration. So always use the second gun on the KV-5. And always try to angle it. You know, now especially with the extra armor that you have. Just try to keep it angled. You know, wiggle it back and forth like this. And then you should increase your chance of bouncing shots massively. That's 2.5k damage so far, which is alright. Um, try and take another shot at him. Okay, still mad. He, he wasn't dead, he was just mad. Damn. Now he's being a bit of a annoyance here. I don't know whether he knows that he's blocking the, the Coppola, or he's just trying to shoot mine. I don't know. But that is very good, because now... Vegetto is stealing all my damage, but that's okay. <laughs> that is okay. It's not it's not stealing if you earned it. I guess. And that's 3.4k damage, which is a decent result, I'd say. So you can see it is now quite a decent tank. I'm still not gonna play it a lot because it's slow. Too slow. I, I prefer mediums and heaviums. So it's not gonna be anything for me. But if you like slower tanks, then this I think is gonna be a great choice of premium tank. Next to, well, something like a T-34, or not the VK. So now let's get into the second one here. Uh, it's a tier 9 battle, which is very nice. And there is a lard as well in the game. Which is very disturbing. But yeah, they have quite interesting tanks. They have two lard boys with emoji avatars, which means their combat ability is probably going to be that of a wet shoe. So let's see what we can do. But obviously... You can never know. So treat every enemy as if they were a super unicum, and then beat them anyway. That's how I do it, at least. Um, 
I guess. Okay. They're kind of fat. They're looking the turrets at me, so... Not much I can do. Still looking at me. Well, he tried a blind shot, which is actually very smart, could I say. And now, where are the rest of them? WT has a very high chance of... Yeah, yeah, camping rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> Come on, stop being so predictable, man. Like, I, I don't know how much people can have like 20k battles in this game and not know what they're doing. Like, yo, you, you gotta learn it eventually, right? It's not that hard to just, just pick up the basics, you know? Like, is it that hard for a monkey brain to be like, thanks to our enemy team, thanks to our probably they? Can't be that hard. But, I don't know. I'm not you, so. And I hope you're a good player. If you're not, then, well. Try to try to get better, you know, because that's cool. You know, if you're not the greatest of players, that's okay as long as you try to improve. If you don't improve, then, well, maybe it's time to leave. If you're below average, that is. Because you know, like, if you're good, that's fine. If you're bad, then you you're gonna ruin other people's day by not playing well. Then again, given you could make the argument that I'm ruining people's day because I'm shitting on them. But at least, the difference is, you can learn to become a good player. You know, you can do that too. But to be a bad player, you would have to go down. Which isn't really beneficial. So, there's that. Basically, good player's good, bad player's bad. KB5, very good choice for people that enjoy slow heavy tanks. Not very good choice for me, however. Um, but, still, gotta try to be as objective as possible with these kind of reviews, because obviously if you just review them off personal bias, I'd be like, oh my god, shit tank, blah. But that's not the case, it's not, it's not a bad tank, it's a very good tank, actually. It's just not a tank that fits with my playstyle very well. So, there's that. Hello, boy. Well, cat, more like. Um... He doesn't have a clan. That's nice for him. But because clans are quite good, you know, you get a lot of bonuses and stuff like that, which is pretty nice. And you can also find people to improve, you know? Now, while I'm not a very great person to do that, because I don't have time, just get yourself someone that's a better player and then platoon with them, and then you're gonna be better. It's, it's quite simpler, actually, you know? Just find someone. I, that's how I did it, essentially. I played with a guy. All the years back, that was like 65% or something, and then I slowly got better. Before that, I sucked, so it does work. Also, this thing is very good at ramming, so don't forget to do that when you have the chance. Also, if your gravity's back, do it there as well, because it's not as good as the VK-168, but it's still a very good tank at ramming. So, anyway, to sum up, uh, get good, get the MX M449, even though it's not in shop anymore. And maybe, when this thing is sold for 5.5k again, maybe consider this thing if you like this style of tank. And that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.